what's up guys welcome back to another video today we have a lot of work to do because we're going to be changing all eight fuel injectors on the bmw m5 i ordered all the injectors from fcp euro i did verify using ista that i have the eu6 injectors which are the technically the updated version injector the eu6s flow a little bit less fuel than the eu5s but supposedly they're supposed to be more reliable I already have EU6s in the car. The car has 61,000-ish miles. As you guys remember, the engine was replaced at 33,000 miles. I checked all the records and it does not look like the fuel injectors were replaced. The only things that were replaced I saw part numbers for were these, uh, you know, the, the couplings that go on the bottom of the fuel injector. This was the only thing listed as replaced. So I believe the injectors were reused. So if that's the case, these injectors are, have about 61,000 miles on them. I like to have things preventative maintenance done as much as possible, especially because injectors on these cars are known to get stuck open. They dump fuel into the engine, wash out the cylinder walls, thin out the oil, and then spin bearings and seize the engine and you're screwed. Basically go over the process with you guys of how to replace these fuel injectors and you know I'll kind of guide you through and we'll see how it goes. I've never done a injector job before so this is going to be a learning experience. I did purchase the tool that is needed from Amazon. I'll have the link in the description below. So the tool, one individual tool itself, I believe it's like $60. I got a whole set for like 105, so that's the way I recommend you go. Um, but yeah, we'll disconnect the battery first because we have to take off the DMEs. That's the one thing that I do not like doing is unplugging the DMEs because there's so many connections for them. Let me show you. Okay, so if you know, the car has two DMEs. Uh, driver's side and a passenger side okay there is one two three four five six plugs on each one and you have to be very careful to make sure you unseat them properly and seat them in properly so you don't bend any pins pull any pins out because that could at least lead to other issues so that's the thing i'm really cautious about because when i did my uh, spark plugs and coils i managed to not unplug those and just move them around a little bit to get the job done here it's going to be impossible so they do need to be unplugged and moved out of the way so that's the only thing that's kind of causing me a little bit of concern but you know if i do it carefully we should be good to go so i'm going to disconnect the battery first and foremost you have to disconnect the battery because you're going to be unplugging the dmes you don't want any power going through the car then we'll just start step by step taking things out of the way i'll take out the intake boxes uh, this coolant hose we're going to be disconnecting or the coolant reservoir power steering reservoir is going to be all moved out of the way and then we'll kind of go from there all right so up to this point what i've done took off the intakes Loosen this, disconnected the O2 sensors on both sides, and I loosened the power steering pump right here, or the power steering reservoir. Next is to unplug the DMEs. So I'm gonna start on that side because there's a little bit more room, and then we'll do this side and just see how it goes. So what I'm also gonna do is mark these so I know which one goes where. One, this is gonna be two, this is gonna be three, it's gonna be four, five, and six. <laughs> To be continued once I'm done struggling getting these out. So far number three is very stuck, so I'll be back. All right guys, progress update. This job is the biggest pain in the absolute ass. Oh man, like just disconnecting this DME, like getting the loom, the wiring loom out of here. Like the DME is cooled by coolant lines, so it can't be fully removed. 
because then you're gonna have to be bleeding your cooling system. Down here, that's where the injectors are. But you see all this wiring? This wiring has to come out first because the fuel rail is underneath it and you have to remove the fuel rail in order to get access to the injectors here. So, I mean, this is just, this is just gonna be impossible because like, there's no, it's just, wow. I'm kind of contemplating on just putting this all back and uh, saying, screw it. But let me just think about this for a minute and see what I come up with if I decide I need to do this or not. Cause like, I want to do it. I have the parts. I'm halfway there on this side. It's just, wow, there's so many things here. All right, <clears throat> update, I decided I'm gonna do this job. Right here, there was a fuel line that was kind of preventing me from getting this uh, to be moved around a little bit. So you basically, what you do is you press in and you pull out. That's how it locks into place. So now that I got this out, and this side is the harder side because there's less room here so i figure if i could do this side we'll be able to do that side so i'm gonna just slowly start taking things apart and out of here so wish me luck um i'll keep you updated but basically the cooling or the power steering reservoir i need to move it a little bit out of the way here some of these lines need to be moved out of the way to so we could get to the bolts that hold this wiring loom that goes to the main computer the computer is going to stay more or less in this area um and yeah we'll go from there all right so i thought this was a cooling line that was right here it's not i unplugged it i was able to move this power steering reservoir out that gives us a lot more room over here and you can see the injectors the high pressure high pressure fuel pump the rest of my uh, ignition coils so what I'm going to work on now is loosening uh, the bolts that hold this big wiring loom and try to get it out of the way. Progress is being made. We got the loom out of its place. Two nuts and this plug right here, which is this one. This is the fuel rail plug man do i hate bmw plugs and plugs in general like this thing does not did not want to come out at all but we got it out so next step is i believe there are three bolts on the bottom of the fuel rail one two three we're going to loosen these nuts and this one that goes to the high pressure fuel pump we're going to take the fuel rail out and then we have easy access to change the injectors let's go Alright guys, so I kind of made it seem a lot harder than it is because it was my first time doing this, but let me kind of go over the steps to where we are right now, okay? Disconnect the battery, take out the intake boxes, start disconnecting the um, DME connections, you start removing this wire loom, take out your spark plugs or ignition coils, disconnect the fuel injectors, move this out of the way, and now I took out the bottom bolts for the fuel rail. I'm gonna start disconnecting these four bolts um, for the injectors, and then the one that leads to the high pressure fuel pump. The fuel rail comes out. Then we just disconnect this one bracket that holds the injectors in. And then we will go ahead and start with the special tool needed to pull the injectors out. So I maybe made it seem very difficult, which is, it, it is hard, but it's definitely doable and now with this guy that you guys have you should be able to do it too on your own and save yourself thousands of dollars the hardest part i think was just kind of being careful to unplug the connections to the dme so you don't bend any pins or anything like that and this hidden plug that goes to the fuel rail right there was very very hard to undo but as typical plugs are so once you get that done you should be good to go, so let's get on to the next steps. Loosen everything, so this theoretically, this fuel rail, should just come on out, so. Okay, we have a little fuel trickling. There's the fuel rail, guys. 
out and about let me pop this bad boy up on the counter here let me get a rag on here because it's dripping a little bit from the high pressure fuel pump but by no means is it like pouring out anywhere or anything okay so let me see if i could cap that off so i do have these little suckers laying around from different projects so that's what i use to cap these fuel lines here here and the one from there so now the only thing left to do is undo this bracket these two brackets that hold um, the fuel injectors in their position we'll undo those and get the tool which i'll show you right here i ordered this from amazon it was a hundred bucks link will be in the description below this is the actual tool that we will be using for the m5 injectors but it comes with different ones for the s58 b58 pullers and stuff like that so link will be in the description below but i'm excited we're getting progress done and this is going pretty dang good so let's get those brackets out and then we'll get to the fun part of actually pulling injectors and praying they come out nice and smooth but keep in mind the orientation of the injectors okay each pin plug is pointed to the outside so that's the same way they're gonna go in when they're orientated back okay you're gonna pull this off and just mark the orientation because it is half it's like a half moon shape so you don't want to install it like this because you see it's not going to be pushing the the injectors down correctly so you have to go in like this the correct way so make sure you orient that this little green dot on mine is facing down okay so we got the tool on and this injector basically came free as you can see it's a little you see the plug moving so this bad boy is basically loose this sucker on this end though is on there tight so let's see if we could get it to pop okay it's looking a little looser now yep i think it's i think it let loose and it's going Let's see if we can get it the rest of the way by hand. Not yet. There it is. So you don't want to exceed 13 newton meters of force if you're going to be reusing your injectors. I am not reusing them. The whole point of them is to be changed. But yeah it fell to the ground <laughs> it fell to the ground it hit the ground that's the first thing i dropped today it's because bully kid came and uh yeah if i decided to fall well what's going on guys bully kid here and bmw m5 problems and maintenance bosch oem injectors these are obviously direct injectors and they look a lot different than your standard uh, port injectors and they're definitely a lot more expensive uh, in my opinion if i'm getting a car i prefer just getting port injectors they're a lot cheaper they're a lot more readily available with different companies and brands direct injection has its place and you can i believe run higher compression ratios with direct injection but you're missing out on the port cleaning on the intake side and obviously these engines you know a lot of these direct injection engines they want you to walnut blast or you know what they're doing now i think uh ice like uh what's that ice blasting really? a cleaning thing what, what do you call it uh you know how they do ice in the in the car yeah, to like remove dry, dry ice blasting yeah. yeah because there's nothing to clean you know it'll like evaporate uh -huh. so they'll do dry ice blasting i think it's nice so we got it up. It looks like it's moving. It's moving. I just let's see. Let me back this up a little. That's like out already. Yeah. yeah this one's out. Yeah. Yep, they're out. Okay. So then we're gonna loosen our tool. Loosen the tool. And we'll be right back. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Wake up. So here's what I want to know. I'm hoping and praying. Where's the light? Give me the light. 
I'm hoping and praying that the, the couplers at the bottom come out with our injector. Couplers, I don't know what the- Yes, couplers, bring, check. Bring them in together. Hold on, let me, let me zoom in on this or zoom out. What are we looking at here? So these are the couplers that are reused. That's what kind of seals the compression. Oh yeah, it's like a gasket yeah. pretty much. But look at the corrosion on these bad boys. Yeah, hold on, look, 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 let me. That's direct injection for you right there, guys. Yeah, it's definitely a uh, soot and uh, what do you, yeah, soot, pretty you know, much, yeah. Pretty much. Interesting. I wonder, you know, it, it, with port injection, they would throw these on a, a little uh, injector tester and cleaner i wonder if if well you know if people do direct <clears throat> injection cleaning and like test flow flow rate there's machines that you could do that but it's expensive but yeah. i mean if we could find a place to locally test them and clean them that i mean cool. you, you know you have a backup setting exactly. in case you know where it's so uh i know you probably made this video but are these and these the same or same thing same ones you went with the same right same thing so the important thing you guys got to notice all right since we got them out i'll open this one for you so we have to program these into the car after they're changed for the flow rate so are they different flow rate this number not? right here is 215. okay all and all the new ones that came are 215. thankfully okay. so far these two that came out are also 215 flow rate is that what it is 215 like cc i don't, I don't it's just a number because there's different okay. numbers you just have to kind of program it into the system okay but if we want to compare our uh the nozzles brand new to old all right let me zoom in on that real quick yeah i mean definitely uh different I, I wish we can like clean one up yeah. so we can see the dif the difference up close, you know, like how it looks. But where's the compression ring on this? Yeah, they're separate. I got to put them on. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, did they look the same? Yep. Look. Oh, yeah, because mine is the compression mm -hmm. ring. It looks like it's going to be the same. Germany. Oh, yeah. we got... That's the only thing I noticed when I was pulling them out. We got Turkey, man. So these, I believe these are the original ones that came with the car. The Germany ones. Yeah. Okay interesting all right we got the new fuel injectors in there and we're going to be tightening them down yep and hoping they seat themselves properly yeah we put the new crush washer in on them How many things fell under the car Ever right now? since you came, things started falling. <laughs> Nothing fell before. Man, I mean, literally, you got a tray of parts on the skid plate right now. Look at all the crud on this. Oh, yeah. Well, that's just the housing, right? But yeah, even the, even the inside. Yeah, yeah, clearly whoever gonna, did this. Gonna, don't hate me for this video. I'm not that good. <laughs> um, yeah, so like we mentioned previously, yeah, you can see the BMW logos on, on the original ones. You can see that here and here. Get a video of that dirt in there, dude. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Get that light at a, this angle from here. Move your camera over more so you go straight down. Oh no, you're not angling it right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Fifth. whatever. A lot of crud and crap around that area. Same thing, even cylinder. Look, can you get it in there? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right. Right there. There's a lot of just dirt and debris sitting right there. So we're going to vacuum that out. Uh, we already have a little masterpiece here with the vacuum and some suction. I love working on cars. <laughs>
Pay attention to how the crush washer sits. We're reinstalling the fuel injectors right over here. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, mount them up to the assembly tool. We got the assembly tool already pulled back. These Turkey made injectors better be better than Germany made ones. Yeah, you made from Kazakhstan. See? So the holes are clean, uh, the ones we just vacuumed out. They're much cleaner than they previously were. You definitely don't want the debris there falling into the engine. Okay, so we're gonna do this bolt in. So the center bolt mounts into the valve cover just to keep things secure and tight. And then at that point, you're just gonna be lefty. L lefty is the tight. Yep. Yep, because you can see them going down and you gotta make sure they're oriented the same way as these are. You see how those are oriented the yeah. same direction? Yep, yep, for the for the harnesses to go in. Yes. Here, let me get Let me get light here so I can get a good video here, yep. And then do you torque these or do you just hand tight or what's the, the Leo here? Uh, I'm gonna read the instructions now and see. Don't buy a BMW. That's all I'm gonna say. Each time I keep filming, I die a little bit inside because I'm too tired to film for you guys. But I'll give you an update. As you can see, we have a tank hanging. I'm going fishing with a coolant tank. <clears throat> driver side injectors are changed we reinstalled the fuel rail connections are made next we will go back in with putting in the wiring harness and start buttoning up this side and just putting it all together and yeah it's a slow going process very tedious little by little but you basically just unplug everything, plug back in, and just make sure you're show, doing it show, right. Show them all the things you had to take off because you lost bolts. Yeah, yeah, a couple things fell off underneath the car, so we had to oh. undo a bunch of bolts. And, and they're still missing. Can't find the life for the life of us. Yeah, man, this thing looks like a cluster. This like it looks like a cluster. Yeah, looks like an engine swap ready to get yeah, wired in. Yeah, seriously. All right, guys, progress update. <clears throat> Four o'clock. I've been at this since about 8.30 in the morning. I'm starting to button everything up. Um, I did all the injectors on this side. Went a lot quicker than this side since I already knew more or less how to use the tool and how it was going. Uh, yeah, basically reinstalled the ignition coils, buttoned up all the grounds. Make sure you don't miss the grounds because that's it's very easy to overlook those little grounds right there there's two of them and then there's grounds that go to the ECU so make sure you ground those um, tie in the fuel lines as best as you can don't overdo it and yeah I'm gonna bind it up coat everything through ISTA I'll walk you through that when I get to that step but yeah we'll go from there all right ladies and gentlemen I think I have everything buttoned together. Um, I just left this loose a little bit so I could see the fuel rails, <clears throat> but ECUs are both connected. S oxygen sensors reconnected, grounds reconnected. Um, on the other side, I connected the fuel line that I disconnected earlier. Yeah, just these small little wires need to go into the right place. MAF sensors connected, O2s, that fuel line. Yeah, I think everything is good. I reconnected the grounds to the DMEs on both sides. 
O2s on this side are connected. So I think we're good. What I'm gonna do is go take a shower because I am bloody, dirty, sweaty, stinky. And then we will go inside. All the old injectors, let me show you. All the old injectors came out and they were all 215 flow rate. Same as all the brand new ones. So I believe all the EU6s are 215 so when i go into ista i'll just make sure all of them are 215 and then i'll just reset the adaptations and then we'll go and fire it up but everything's done here uh, before i actually shower i'll raise the car up and put on the under panels that i had to take off when bolts and shit fell down so let me do that and then we'll get back to the the computer stuff just for Quick. All right, guys, we are in the car and we are going to use ISTA to program the new injectors and reset up to adaptations. And I'm going to watch a YouTube video of how it's done because I'm not 100% sure. So let's get into it. I'm just going to kind of time lapse this. ISTA software and know how to get to this point. Um, so, we are going to start with um, the operations menu, and we need to read out the vehicle data. We need a complete identification to continue on with the calibration of the fuel injectors. This is going to take a few minutes. Um, it works a little bit slow, but uh, we have to read all of the control manuals, uh, modules, excuse me, all of the control modules in the car. We need to do a readout on all of them. Um, so we're going to do a, um, a, um, a complete uh, um, search here. Now you can see now the control unit tree is up. Um, it's going to go ahead and read all the control modules. And just so you know, we do have the ignition in the second position to do this. As I said earlier, we do use the ISTA Plus on, on uh, and ISTA P on uh, our on our programming and more of our hardcore diagnostics. But the Foxwall handheld uh, is a great affordable unit for pulling um, quick codes, quick fault codes from your car. Uh, we use it actually all the time. It's um, it's just compact. service functions. We are going to go to powertrain, engine electronics, adjustment functions. We are going to go over to injection quantity compensation. Now here's some very good information on how to read the fuel injectors to get your, um, your we're going to go to powertrain, engine electronics, adjustment functions. We're going to go over to injection quantity compensation. Now here's some very good information on how to read the fuel injectors to get your, um, your injection uh, uh, value. 
that we're going to need to uh, calibrate. Um, I will tell you that not all of these um, not all of these values are on the same spot on fuel injectors. This is a, this is a nice little article it gives you a great overview. But um, some injectors have their values in different spots. If you want to read our article on uh, on the repair guide. Um, uh, replacing the fuel injectors on the N55, we show you where they were on, on our installation. They're a little bit different than what they show in this article. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue on. Continue on again. Now, we've popped up the current values that are stored. These are the current calibrated values that are currently stored in the DME for our six cylinders, uh, the injectors in our six cylinders. We need to change four and five. We just we just installed uh, new injectors in four and five. We actually did the entire bank too. We installed cylinder six yesterday. Uh, we went ahead and calibrated that. So now seems like a lot of work, but actually Ista Plus is actually extremely easy once you uh, get acquainted with it. Um, really, it's just like any other software. The best way to learn it is to use it. All right, we're going to go ahead and switch on terminal 15, which is two clicks on the start-stop. Hit continue. Another countdown. All right, and we are all set. We have calibrated our fuel injectors. We have reset our adaptation values. And we can go ahead and safely start the car now. Um, if you have. Alright, so this is very tedious, but I put in the new injectors. I am resetting the adaptations, I guess, for the second time now. Just want to make sure it's getting done properly. And then um, it says adaptations values have been fully reset. The teaching in of the new adaptation values takes place over the entire speed and load range. This may lead to a rough engine start at the beginning, so it's just letting you know it might be a little rough. Switch off the ignition, allow vehicle to go to sleep, then switch ignition on, start the engine, run in idle for two minutes to enable a basic, basic adaptation to be conducted and service function. Alright, so I guess we are finished. Um, yeah, guess we're done. All right, uh, here goes nothing. Let me start, let me just, uh, I'm gonna fire the car up for the first time and then we're gonna go outside and just look and make sure we don't have any leaks or anything like that. They said it might run rough this first start, so let's see. Took a little longer to crank over, but it's running okay. Just making sure there's no smells of fuel or anything crazy. It's not really running rough or anything, which is a good sign. No leaks. Looks good. We'll pop the cover on and go for a drive. Actually, I'll put that reservoir in first and then we'll go for a drive. All right, so we are just setting off out of my garage. It idled perfectly fine for a few minutes. Um, yeah, we're gonna just go for a gentle cruise, let it warm up. And just uh, basically it has to relearn itself and just, you know, praying to God that this modification that I did will you know these injectors will go another 50k easily hopefully without any problems and by then by the time i put up 50ks on a car that's gonna be never gonna happen um and then i'll move on to bigger and better things but hopefully this will keep things nice and safe and protected but 
yeah, let's go for a cruise and see how she does. But just to give you guys an example, like, I've never done this before. I had the tools that I needed, and this basically took, it's a 10 hour job for sure if you're taking your time and not rushing it and you don't drop any bolts and have to lift the car up and take off the belly pan. Oh, my start stop turned off because the battery was reset. Um, but that just scared the crap out of me guys because so I, I disconnected the battery and the auto start stop was deactivated so the car shut off and it just freaked me the hell out but okay <laughs> we're back to running dumbest feature ever twin turbo v8 that gets like 15 miles a gallon and they have auto stop start like blows my mind but um yeah 10 hour job if you're doing it parts Injectors like 800 something dollars. The uh, injector removal and installation tool was about a hundred bucks. Uh, ISTA, you need some kind of programming computer, and ISTA is pretty damn complicated. There's a lot of these newer computers, like the Altels, they're like 1500 bucks that could do a lot of these things that ISTA can, and it's much quicker and smoother. So you do need some kind of computer to program in the new injectors and reset adaptations. Other than that, it was a lot of work. My hands hurt, my back hurt, my knees hurt, but the car is up, car is running. Um, yeah, we're gonna go drive around. I'm gonna get some food. Hopefully I can put on maybe, well, as many miles as I can today, and then we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna, hood up, I'm gonna hook up my, uh, boot mod and so I could just monitor my uh, fuel trims and all that stuff and just see how it goes so if you guys enjoyed this video I know I planned on originally making it a lot more detailed but man I need somebody to be a film crew because doing this by yourself and, and it's just a lot of work filming by yourself but if you guys appreciate it send a comment below smash the like button subscribe I'll see you guys on the next video peace